Wow, I didn't think anyone would still be here. Thank you for coming for this. As was just pointed out, I, a few years ago, uh, my friend Richard Dawkins asked me to give a talk at a meeting uh, uh, called The Universe from Nothing, so I did. And uh, then I wrote a book on it. And I was celebrating how the universe that we live in actually uh, is more remarkable than any of the myths and fairy tales that, that are talked about in religious books, and in particular, that it's plausible that it could come from nothing. But today I want to talk about something that's equally plausible, but much more tragic. How to get nothing from something. It's happened a number of times in human history. It happened during the medieval era, when religious dogma erased the enlightenment of the Greeks. Measuring the circumference of the earth, all of that was forgotten. It happened in the Arabic world, in the 11th century, when what was then the center of culture and mathematics became an economic and intellectual backwater because of Islamic fundamentalism. And it can happen today. Science is one of the most exciting and greatest intellectual adventures that humanity has ever embarked upon. It's told us about the universe from the size of atoms to the size of galaxies and beyond. It's told us about the universe from its first microsecond until billions or trillions of years into its future. It's told us how the diversity of life arose here on Earth from very simple origins, and it will one day, I suspect, in the lifetime of the people here, tell us how chemistry turned into biology, how non-life turned into life. It's taught us about our minds and our society. It's created the technology that governs our lives, medicine that's kept us living longer and healthier lives, and in fact, technology that has allowed many people, unfortunately not all, but many and most people on the planet, to live better and longer. But the 21st century is placing challenges on us like we've never had. Global climate change, overpopulation, the energy crisis, the need finally to educate and stop the subjugation of women around the world. And we have to enter that since this century with our eyes wide open. I began this most recent book with a quote from one of my favorite writers, Jacob Bernowski, who said, dream or nightmare, we have to live our lives and our experience as it is. And we have to live it awake. We live in a world which is penetrated through and through by science and which is both real and whole. We cannot turn it into a game simply by taking sides. In this century when we have to face the future with our eyes wide open, we have candidates for president who are now suggesting that their public policy should be based on the fact that the United States is in a battle with Satan that climate change is a conspiracy based on scientists who value quote earth over man that in fact have said that God will take care of the earth and it doesn't matter we were given stewardship over it candidates who say that birth control and prenatal care produce abortion another candidate who says the Pope is responsible for the fall of communism Another candidate who has said that in the future Jesus will reign over Jerusalem and Missouri. <laughs> and our current president who has said we should tax the rich because that is what Jesus would do. Not because it's appropriate. We have to enter the future with our eyes wide open. And science teaches us to have an open mind. That means forcing our beliefs to conform to the evidence of reality, not the other way around. The universe, as I often say, is the way it is whether we like it or not. Get used to it. The meaning in our lives is the meaning we provide. Now reason and science tell us to keep asking questions. 
A few years ago, I helped start an organization called Science Debate 2008, which has now become Science Debate 2012, where we're trying to get a debate between the presidential candidates on science and technology issues, the issues that will govern our future, energy, national security, health care. Last time when we tried to make this happen in Philadelphia, the candidates the day before decided instead that they would have a debate on faith. Faith doesn't matter. Faith isn't going to affect our future. Taking actions to address the challenges of the 21st century, the real challenges that face us as a nation, is what's required. Right now, a recent study by psychologists in the United States and Canada said that atheists are the least trusted group in the nation, just on par with rapists. But in fact, we as a society should value open questioning. That's what science teaches us. We should not revile reason and questioning. We should revere it. Einstein said 60 some odd years ago after we exploded the first atomic weapon that everything has changed save the way we think. And unless we change the way we think, and unless we're willing to revere open questioning, discussion, and a public policy based on reality, we can take this wonderful world we have now in many ways and turn something into nothing. And we all have to make sure that doesn't happen. Thank you very much.